back with Liam Schreiber, everybody. You have, I mean, I would be terrified to do a Broadway show, but you had something very <clears throat> scary happening recently where you had to leave a show after it started. The worst nightmare that an actor could possibly ever experience. I was in my dressing room and I had a terrible headache, like a really bad headache. I thought it was maybe a fast food headache, but it felt a little stronger than that. And I'm walking down the stairs and I'm thinking, this is not normal, I don't feel okay. I saw Amy Ryan backstage. And you know how actors say things to each other, like, you know, break a leg, mared, good show. And I suddenly noticed that I didn't remember what I was supposed to say to her. And I'd said it at least 30 times by that point. So something was wrong. I also couldn't remember her name, so I knew something was, was really wrong. That's the second red flag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I kind of weaseled my way out of that interaction, you know, like, <laughs> oh, keep going, in my priest outfit. And I get over to stage left where I make my entrance from and I see the play in the corner and I, there's a light on it and I don't recognize it at all. And I look up to the stage banner and I go, yeah, something's not right. And he looks down and he calls places. And so I go on and I do about the first six or seven lines. Don't worry, this story has a happy ending. <laughs> I do the first six or seven lines of the play sort of automatically. I realize I'm not connected so I decide, let me try to get connected again. And the minute I do that, it all vanishes. The play is gone from my head. I'm looking out into a dark audience. I know I'm in a play, but I don't know what play I'm in. I look down at my clothes and I realize I'm a priest, <laughs> which is helpful, but not giving me any lines. <laughs> I come off stage. They all are very worried about me. I can see they rush me to my dressing room. The next thing I remember is hearing my understudy doing the lines from the play and thinking it sounds really good, I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> my doctor shows up, who's a friend, and he has terrified expression. My wife shows up, she looks terrified. I think, okay, I've had a stroke, this is it. I go get the MRI, no brain bleed, perfectly fine, might I add, a fairly good looking brain, the, yeah. the, the guy said. <laughs> You which showed I was, me a picture of Bexley, and it's good. It's nice, right? Yeah. It's good. Like a 12 year old girl. It's <laughs> yeah, really... yeah, gorgeous. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I, uh, I uh, find out ultimately from a neurologist that I have something called, I had something called transient global amnesia. And apparently, my wife looked it up uh, online, it's brought on by migraines and rigorous coitus. <laughs> my wife then asks me what coitus is, and. <laughs> Well, you know, and I, I said, honey, that's, that's sex. And it, so it's like rough sex. And she said, oh, you were having rough sex. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I had a headache. <laughs> um, and that, that's what happened to me. Now, now, the guy said, you'll never have this again, and it'll be gone in eight to 24 hours, which I didn't believe. And as, you know, a typical sort of Jewish hypochondriac person, I'm convinced that I've had a stroke and they just didn't find it. I go home, I'm having like paranoid episodes about our guests who are in the house. I just figure I better go to sleep because, because I'm gonna say something dumb. I go to sleep, I wake up, I remember the whole play. <laughs> I call the theater and I say, I'm coming up to do the matinee. And they're like, no, no, your doctor said you have to stay away till Tuesday. And I was like, no, I need to know that I can do the play. And I never had another problem with it. I called, I was embarrassed and I thought everyone would think I was lying and taking a night off from the theater. I have this obscure thing. I call a friend, Jonathan, and I say, so I had this thing. It's called transient, transient global amnesia. And without missing a beat, he says, oh yeah, my friend Nathan had that. He was having sex with his wife in the shower and <laughs> lost two days. <laughs> so apparently it really is a thing. And I guess. I'm so sad for you that you got it via head. I know. <laughs> when the other option is to, to literally have your brains <laughs> fucked out, I, I had to get it from a migraine. <laughs> but, uh, I bet if I had amnesia from a migraine, my wife would see it as an opportunity to be like, no, we had sex. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I thought we could do then is probably look up all the people who've had it and decide whether it was a migraine <laughs> or a headache. But that would, migraine or, or rough sex, but that would probably take too you, long. Uh, it was, uh, I thought it was a nice parallel when you mentioned uh, Ukraine. Um, you've made multiple trips. You have Ukrainian uh, uh, ancestry and roots, and uh, you've, you've spent time with Zelensky. Um, I mean, how do you feel? I mean, you mentioned the fact that the GOP is holding up an aid bill and, um, and tying it to other demands and refusing to vote on it independently. Um, it must really take you aback that people are both siding what seemed like a very clear issue. It's striking to me, you know, 
when I think about, um, I was I, I wrote something for Time recently, and I really and I we had an opportunity to write something. I thought, well, I have to write this for Blue Check, and I was thinking, how do I really feel about this? And you know, a lot of people think it's because I'm of Ukrainian ancestry, and I I don't feel that way at all. I, I feel it's because I'm American. I care about this, um, and I think about my grandparents and the generation of Americans who fought in World War II and established uh, our, our what we now know as our democracy and, and the reason why we're the number one destination for anyone in the world who wants to improve their station in life is because of the freedoms and liberties that come out of our democracy. And Ukraine is on the front line of a global war, in my opinion, on democracy. And I think uh, not, not, to, not to suggest that in any way America is the, the policing the world for democracy, but that at the very least, we should be in solidarity with them and that we should be supporting them. So many of us uh, have come from these countries that were struggling under these uh, uh, autocrats and dictators. And um, it just feels very close to home for me, not really as a Ukrainian, but as an American. And I feel like we've lost those, uh, those values a little bit or we've forgotten what those values are or what it is to be American. It's a really important message, and thank you for being so vocal about it. And thank you for being here. Break a leg tonight. Thank you. That was such a delight. Liam Schreiber, everybody. Doubt a parable playing at the Roundabout Theater Company's Todd Haynes Theater through April 21st. We'll be right back with Busy Phillips.